The next functional group that we can have is the carboxyl group. That is the carboxyl group. We've got a carbon bonded to an oxygen and double bonded to another oxygen. There's two families of organic compounds that share this. Depending on whether this is on the primary or end carbon or secondary or middle carbon. The first family of organic compounds that has this functional group is organic acids have COO on the end of the molecule. It's a primary carboxyl group. So it's a primary carboxyl group with a detachable hydrogen on the end. Remember, acids lose hydrogen when they undergo chemical reactions. That's what these organic acids do. This hydrogen actually ionizes in water and leaves behind that when it's done. The shorter the organic acid is, the more polar it is, and therefore, the stronger an acid it is. Acid strength increases as the number of carbons decreases. The name would be just like naming alcohols, except you don't need to put a number in front. This carboxyl group will always be on the end of the molecule, so it would always be in the one position. And we have the ending oic acid. The simplest organic acid, meth anoic acid, contains one carbon, which is the formation of the carboxyl group, with the H that comes off when dissolved in water, and another H here. This is known as methanoic acid methane organic acid. It's also called formic acid. You get bit by a red fire ant. That's what they're injecting into your body that it hurts so much. H, C-O-O-H. F anoic acid. F anoic acid. There's the carboxyl group. Here's the H on the end that comes off when you dissolve it in water, and that's filling up the rest of the carbons with what? Yes, hydrogens. CH3, COOH. Ethanoic acid is also known as acetic acid. If we get rid of this H on the end, we have the CH3, COO minus ion. CH3COO- is known as the acetate ion. So this is also referred to as acetic acid. A 5% solution of it is known as distilled white vinegar. Vinegar contains acetic acid. That's right, you can actually, well I wouldn't drink it from the container, but in its diluted form you can use it for cleaning stuff and you can even use it on food. Organic acids have this carboxyl group but so does another group, the esters. In organic acids, the COO is on a primary position. It's at the end of the molecule. In an ester, the COO is in a secondary position. It's in the middle of the molecule. And that makes all the difference in the world. Esters have the general formula of R1, which means group of hydrocarbon chains on the left side, COO, R2 which means a hydrocarbon chain on the right side. So it's a secondary carboxyl group as opposed to organic acids, which were primary. They're used to make artificial flavors and odors. Now they're naturally found in fruits. You ever see ingredient label on something that says natural and artificial flavoring? That artificial flavoring is artificially manufactured esters. See, what scientists, flavor chemists, try to do is they take a look at popular flavors, natural flavors, and try to figure out what chemical is responsible for that flavor. That chemical is an ester. And once you know what ester is responsible, it's fairly easy to manufacture it. If you're a flavor chemist, you're working with esters. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The naming of an ester is a little bit bizarre. There's two sides. R2, I say R2. The R2 prefix with a YL after it, so if this is one carbon, it would be methyl. If it was three carbons, it would be propyl. Then R1 plus this carbon prefix, anoate. So if this was two carbons, that would be a third. That would be propanoate. 
If this was four carbons, this is five, it would be pentanoate. Let's take a look at some examples if that's confusing the heck out of you. First, we have pineapple flavor. Mm -mm. Butyl butyrate. Now, butyrate, also known as butanoate, contains, but is four carbons. One, two, three, four. Butan O8, this is the side that has the oxygen on it. Butan O8. The part of the name that has the O in the name is the part that has the double bonded oxygen. Then on this side we have butyl, which is another four carbons. And this is butyl butan O8 or pineapple flavor. Ethyl pentanoate. Pent is five carbons. Pentanoate means that the oxygen's on the end of those five carbons. That completes the carboxyl group. Ethyl means there's two carbons on this side. And then we finish going through and adding up enough bonds so that all the carbons have four. Ethyl pentanoate. Pentyl ethanoate. Artificial banana flavor. Ethanoate. F is two carbons with an O. And of course the other O to complete the carboxyl group. Pentyl would be five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Ba ba ba. And this would be pentyl FNO8, artificial banana flavor. As you're going to see in a later video, the name of the ester tells you how to make the ester. That's right. It's amazing. You're going to need pentyl alcohol and ethanoic acid. The name of the ester tells you how to make it. How amazing is that? Okay, now let's collapse this formula down. CH3. CH2, CH2, COO, CH2, 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 CH3. And that's the collapsed structural formula for butyl butanoate. To collapse ethyl pentanoate, CH3, CH2, 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 COO, CH2, CH3. And to collapse the formula for pentyl ethanoate, CH3, COO, CH2, 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 and CH3. Just like that.